on this very special Halloween edition of Newest Latest Best, The Counselor Thrills, American Horror Story Chills, and New Halloween Candy Spills. All that and more coming up. Halloween. A holiday about three of my favorite things. Candy, cosplay, and bad puns. So let's get right to the booest. <laughs> It is Halloween week, of course, but the newest movie this week isn't a horror film per se, it's a thriller, and we had to talk about this one. It's Ridley Scott, Cormac McCarthy, and a whole ton of big time movie stars. You got Brad Pitt, you got your Cameron Diaz, you got your Penelope Cruz. It is chock full, top to bottom, with big time movie stars. And this is one hell of a movie. I love Cormac McCarthy. I love his books. I've read his books. I love the films that are based on his books. They are incredible, thought-provoking, harrowing at times. This movie is that. Cormac McCarthy actually wrote the script. I don't think it's even based on a, a book by him. It's just an original script this time. And this is, what is it about? Hard to sum up. It's a, about, if you forgive my lofty, metaphor, it's about the poetry of fate. How's that for a description? Not fate in the term of destiny, but fate in how we end up, the decisions we make, and where our lives lead. And if I can stretch that lofty uh, description a little further, I think like poetry, this movie is, a, is as much about what is left out as what is put in. I really like movies that have enough confidence to delay letting you know all the details for as long as possible. This movie sets people up like on a chessboard and they, you don't really know how they are related to each other at first and nothing is explicit, it's all inferred and you get these little slices of life, these little sections of incredibly dense, interesting dialogue between characters and little by little you start to piece together what the situation is. And much like a David Mamet movie, for example, a lot is just not described. We don't know exactly what the person does for a living or exactly what the, uh, the, the crime that has been committed is. But it doesn't matter because the way these characters bump up against each other, the conflicts that they run into, and the stakes that, that, that they end up having to live their lives by are so high and so crazy that I was completely on the edge of my seat. This is harrowing and visceral and exciting and there's stuff that happens in this movie that I've never seen in any film before. And the language that the characters speak with is so fascinating. There's these discussions that are in really a poetic form of life and love and death. And it had me on the edge of my seat as a thriller. I, I, I had my ears perked up as, as a amusing on life. And it had me thinking as I walked out of the theater and in the days that have followed. I really like this movie. It's very dark. It's not easy to watch sometimes, but my God, what an experience. It's really like nothing else I've seen in quite a long time. The Counselor, wow, really, really good. All right, that's the newest. Uh, Christian, my semi-regular co-host and review buddy, is back to talk Halloween, and we got some scares and some treats coming right up. It's time to talk Halloween. I'm in costume. All I need is someone to hang out with. Mm, can't seem to find anybody around here. Oh, <laughs> oh look, you were hiding oh. because you're dressed as Joel 
from Last of Us, is that right? The Last of Us, yeah, grayed in my hair. I've got a gun. Nice. I'm full and full. You can't see it, but you know, I got my, I got my gun with my back tuck. You must have uh, scavenged on. that from somewhere. Yeah, I did. I found it, and I have two blades. I saw some scissors when I walked in here, but I can't yeah, carry I got that. Only many. one blade of a scissor it can fit in my back. Uh, I, of course, am. Uh, Frightening Captain America, <laughs> <laughs> awkward Captain America. Uh, Christian, tell me, you were telling me that you're actually gonna have your baby daughter be your Ellie, right? Yeah, so that's what kind of inspired the whole costume is that my daughter's name is Estelle, Ellie is the lead in Last of Us, and the wonderful people at Naughty Dog, uh, I actually have some art assets for Ellie's shirt. So we have the awesome. real shirt going, and then this is me, and then I made my wife be Tess, and she's like, I don't know who that is, and I'm like, shut up, it's great. Uh, so it's gonna be fun. Can I just be around you all the time going <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well we're talking about uh, horrific stuff. It's Halloween. Uh, there is no more horrific television show, I would say, than American Horror Story. And uh, they time it to come out during a Rocktober, Shocktober. <laughs> Gotta watch the Tobers. Us talk Tober. Tober, yeah. Yeah. American Horror Story, I watched the very f the first season, really, really dug it. I have never seen anything as disturbing as that show. But the cool thing about American Horror Story is that every season is, it's an anthology of seasons. So every season is a new storyline, a new setting, a lot of the same actors, but it's almost like watching a repertory theater company because it's the same actors all put in a new roles and doing completely different things, which is so cool. I've never seen that on TV before. I don't know of any other show that does that. I mean, it's like Saturday Night Live almost. It's crazy. I feel like when this show was pitched, uh, Ryan Murphy, who's a co-creator of this show and also created Glee, I feel like in American Horror Stories at FX, Glee's at Fox, I feel like Glee was such a hit that Ryan Turp was like, I want to do this. And they're like, whatever it is, you can do it. Green light. <laughs> yeah. And then they read it and they're like, oh, It's like, crap. we expected another Glee. <laughs> yeah. I stopped watching the second season, mm -hmm. which was, the first season was the haunted house thing. Second season was the haunted, or not haunted, but. The spooky asylum. Awful, yeah. horrible mental institution, which was a little too intense. Now we are in the South. We are in the Cajun uh, New Orleans. It is witches. It's, it's American Horror Story Coven. Yeah. I figured with all these, Females in the cast, they had to do witches eventually. But we get lots of craziness here. We got Kathy Bates joining the cast. Yep. Tell me what you thought of, we were only two episodes in, there's been three episodes probably that you have seen, but we've only seen two episodes. So what, after two episodes, what This is the least scary season so far of American Horror Story, I feel like. I feel like in this really? season, I feel like the witches are the protagonists. And season one was horrifying what's happening to this poor family. It's kind of like, you know, the Amityville horror, like that type of, yeah. classic approach and just the asylum of season two I found so much more terrifying than New Orleans you know jambalaya and spooky witches there's no jambalaya in the show there will be there will be <laughs> <laughs> what do you think well I it, I still find it creepy as all hell I mean it okay. is it, it just like how the show is shot with all Dutch angles and yeah. craziness, it makes you feel uncomfortable watching it. I'm, I might agree with you that it's not as dis, just flat out disturbing on a visceral level as mm -hmm. yet as those two seasons. There's still plenty of, dude, Kathy Bates as frightening paint your face with blood lady. And the torture up. scenes that she did to Messed up. Her, yeah, awful. Messed up. But I will have to, I have to say, and two, two episodes in, I reserve the right to change my opinion, but two episodes in, this is my favorite season. Oh, really? I love it. Okay. I love the setting. I love it. It, it feels like um, almost like a, a weird version of the X Men because it's like all these <laughs> witches are hanging out. They've all got their own special power. Yeah. It, it, it feels, you know, they're young, they're at school. It feels like an X Men comic in a bizarre way. The fiction of it, the, the mythology of it is much more interesting to me than it has been yet. I felt like the Haunted House season one, it, just, it, it was just messed up and it kept getting more messed up yes. and this is actually like I'm, I want to find out the answer to the history of all these characters I found that find them interesting I guess what I liked about season one is that you know you felt bad for these people these people were being tortured by the the ghosts the spirits in this house and it was then the things that happened it just kept ratcheting up right and for me with this season it's fun it's entertaining but I I'm not scared of the, the, the what's happened to the protagonist. Bad things haven't started happening to them yet. Right. I think it probably will. It'll set it up. But right now, you have these three witches, or you know, the house full of witches. I guess it's four young girls. Yeah. And kind of, it feels like actually, I feel like they're on adventures, right. which is fun to watch. But season one, I was just like, 
Oh, and season two, just the setting was just nerve wracking. And, and this season hasn't done that. But Kathy like Bates is phenomenal. She is phenomenal. And Je Jessica Lange is always, like, she's the reason to watch this show because she's always awesome and so different from season to season. And she's she has awesome a, again. a Walter White line. If you watch Breaking Bad, you know, I'm the guy that knocks. She had a line in episode two. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, they're cops. She was like, honey. The only person you need to fear is me. And I was like, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's so rad. And, yeah. and I feel like the, the problem I've always had with this series, and I think it's still a problem here, is there's always so much going on yeah. that it feels like they can't just be about one thing. It has to, because <laughs> we've got, we've got witches, we've got even like a Frankenstein, we've got this Minotaur, we've got, there's so many things going on that it almost loses its focus and becomes just a, you know, a circus of horrors rather than about just these witches. But I'm super invested and I'm really interested in like the the one chick that's always listening to Stevie Nicks is cool <laughs> and interesting and... Can we dive into the Minotaur just for a little bit? I'd so, rather not dive into it. Right. The, the hat that No, that yeah. Wears. So minor spoilers, whatever. It's not that, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I'm going to dive into a specific about the show. The Minotaur you see created in the ancient past, mm -hmm. and this, this it was this uh, woman's lover, this right. you know Angela Bassett, yeah, her yeah. lover, and she goes to free him, and that's why they go and get Kathy Bates. This all happens in the first episode, and then in the second episode you see flash forward that the Minotaur is still around. Why didn't you just take that head off of him? I think it it's stuck? fused. It's like there's some fusing. It's been that's hundreds happened. of years. Pretty it's sure your it's fused. Lover. You're, you can have immortality. You have to get your lover no, out of a I bullhead. think some stuff happened in there. <laughs> some stuff definitely happened, but the best line I feel like is when uh, Lang is sitting there and Bassett's hair, hair, getting her hair done. Yeah. She's like, well, maybe in another hundred years you'll find a way to have yourself two shitty salons or something. <laughs> yeah. like that. And it's just like dig. Dude, <laughs> speaking of dig, like the, the where. Kathy Bates has been this whole time is crazy. Like the, that first episode had so much awesome in it. I, I felt like it does feel a little bit like a superhero show, which is kind of why I like it. Which if you watched our episode or review of S.H.I.E.L.D. on yeah. this show, if you haven't, go back and watch it. This show, American Horror Story, uh, sets up an interesting story arc better than episode one of S.H.I.E.L.D. did in my opinion. Like there's these yeah. threads for, oh my God, long stories, but the episode itself was interesting well, there's, and S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't do there's that. There's no pretense of Monster of the Week here. It's Monster of the Season. It's, sure, there's yeah. gonna be monsters. <laughs> here there be <laughs> monsters. Literal monsters, but, yeah. Yeah, so I think, do you recommend it? Oh yeah, wholeheartedly. It's, and you said that you found the other seasons to be creepier, putting But in a good way. But yeah. this season, phenomenal, well acted yeah, so far. I'm digging it. Yeah. All right, so uh, Christian's gonna hang around for best and we're gonna talk uh, Halloween memories and weird Halloween candies of right now. So stick around for that. Halloween is synonymous with candy, but I've been noticing a lot of weird candies lately. So we got a variety of candies. We're going to talk scary movies and we're going to talk candies. This, this side of these are a good <laughs> idea or a bad idea. So here's what we got. We got pumpkin spice M&Ms. Interesting. We've got caramel apple Milky Ways. Finally. <laughs> they got your letters. <laughs> and my personal most anticipated excitement, candy corn Oreos. Are you joking me? These I actually am genuinely excited to try. Do you like candy corn? I love candy corn. Do you okay. not like candy corn? Uh, no, I love candy corn. Okay, I only good. eat it during Is there October. anything here you don't like? Uh, these, these are the M&Ms, this bowl. So when I'm pointing, this yeah. is uh, the... Pumpkin, pumpkin spice m and I'm, I'm scared, honestly, because like pumpkin, it's like it's pumpkin. <laughs> Starbucks, the pumpkin latte's back. All right. There's a reason we don't always have it, because it's not that good. <laughs> Try it. Okay. Have some. I'm going to go here. Some. Let's Thank go. I, I hope I ate a bunch. It's, not, it's weird. They're not bad. The, the chocolate overcomes the pumpkin spice. I wouldn't prefer it. No, but you never pick it. If somebody said, what is that? I don't think I would say pumpkin. It tastes like a M and M that's not quite as good. You like, yeah, it's like with? bad chocolate. <laughs> what's wrong with those? All right. So when you were a kid, what was your uh, what was your procedure with candy when you would come home? What did you did you have like a a plastic pumpkin that you held, or did you have a a, a pillow sack? A pillowcase, plastic yeah. pumpkin. Come on, what are you what are you doing? I had plastic pumpkin. I really? The one you still see everywhere. Oh the my same God. plastic Limits pumpkin. your candy intake. True. I would eat as much as I could while I was still out. Like, so when I was really little, my, really? I'd go out, like we'd get to the end of a block. This is in suburban Houston. My parents would be like, okay, you can go do this block and then meet us back here. 
and I would go down, and then I'd get down to the end, and I would just start eating. And I'd be like, blah, 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 and I'd get back. <laughs> then you'd pass out. Yeah, and it was the worst. I always sorted mine as to the desirability, like mini bars were at the top of the food chain, and all the way down to the, the least desirable were Smarties, the role of Smarties. Okay. And I would eat, I would save the best for last, because I'm weird and... So yeah, we're, delayed gratification. Okay, we're where trying. Do, where do these go in the apple? These would go pretty high, although they're very strange. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open them with my Captain America gloves. That's not that's as far as far worse than the M and M. At least it tastes like apples, but not in a good way. <laughs> it's not. Come on, tell me you don't think this is good. We should have had water. <laughs> Shut up. This is the worst around. idea. Because none of these are going to redeem this. Hey, if you have to throw up, throw up into the pumpkin. <laughs> scary movies. Tell me about a scary movie. Well, once I woke up, I had this dream. Oh, God, this is awful. <laughs> this is an awful aftertaste. <laughs> this is the scary movie. It's <laughs> terrible. Favorite scary movie when you were a kid? I, I don't know. My, I got scared the most. Two movies: Dark Crystal. Dark, Dark Crystal, not a horror movie. I ran out of. Skeksis, scary. Skeksis are scary. I ran out of the Labyrinth. I watched at home. Same reason. The <laughs> well, we talked about it. The Minotaur. Yeah. I was like, this is the. And you can't escape him. Yeah. I was like, this is fright. This is. It was a boogeyman. Yeah. Like the, and. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I was scared of ET. Really? Terrified of that first scene when okay. in the woods. Yeah. Terrified hiding. Yeah. Awful. And Poltergeist, I remember I went to my friend's house, we got to, they were watching Poltergeist, I wasn't allowed to see Poltergeist, but I like crept because I was at the friend's house, and the scene where that giant face, the profile of the giant face, lost it, had nightmares for weeks. Alright, Oreos. Now this is going to be the savior, I'm predicting. Oh my god, I'm nervous. Predicting. These look good. Okay. They smell oh, good. thank you. I like candy corn. Don't eat another one of those chocolates. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I want producer Andy to come over here and have one of these. Yeah, that's a bad decision, Andy. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah, here we go. Oh, hang on, okay. Mm-hmm. That's a big bite. It doesn't taste like candy corn. I don't, uh, okay. It tastes okay. like a vanilla M uh, Oreo. Are you going to do the, Just we'll the, do the, the real, the real taste? Oh, look at that. So have you ever jumped playing a video game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's tons of, tons of scary video games. What do you video games are easier to scare you because you're... You have to be the one walking forward. So do you still play it? Are you jumping into like Slender Man and stuff like that? Or do you, when was the last uh, time you had that like, the moment? Well, man, there's, there's tons of those. I mean, even in just like, just Bioshock has that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of games that have the, oh, I know someone's going to jump out of me in a second. Oh, okay, got me. I remember when I was a kid, or not a kid, but when we were playing like Resident Evil 2, and with a group of dudes, and you have to, somebody's telling you which way to go. That and... was my biggest jump ever. I was playing really? Resident Evil Remake on the GameCube. We'd pack the GameCube with us when I was in college and go on track trips, and like after meets, we'd play. And there's that part where you, you push the box, and then like the snake jumps out or tentacle <laughs> jumps out, and I jumped. <laughs> I swore and I threw the controller and I broke the controller in front of like a room full of like sprinters and track dudes. Hilarious. It was the worst. They'd never seen you move that fast. <laughs> Ooh, Hilarious uh, sprinter joke. Uh, I get it. Uh, amazing. Um, well, anyway, so. Not amazing. These are, these are <laughs> no, uh, all, amazing. complete fail all the way around. What's your favorite candy overall of all time? I really like candy corn because I only eat it in October and it's fun and special. Well, that's what so, makes me so angry. I love candy corn this and this is... doesn't taste anything like candy corn. No. But yeah, I, I love candy corn. I love nerds. Oh, yeah, nerds are great. And also the candy. <laughs> 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 oh, favorite of all time, uh, peach rings. I love, any peach season, rings? Any season. Peach really? rings. Gummy peach rings. Yum, yum, yum. This really? means eating, by the way. That's <laughs> it's pointing the, at my mouth. That's the number one, huh? This is uh, number one million. Is these are the so worst. So sad. All of these. I was kind of excited to try all of them. They're all outside the box. <laughs> Strange. I always love the dark chocolate versions of stuff. That's what I get excited about. Okay. I would not eat the dark chocolate versions of any of these. No. <laughs> Happy Halloween! All right. As always, it's time to send you into next week with some best bets. And since it's Halloween week, we got some Halloween themed best bets for you. And I found two of the most perfect guys to do that for me this week. Two of my favorite people. First up, Todd Stashwick, a fantastic actor who's been on really every awesome show you've ever heard of. 
He's currently on The Originals, which is a vampire show, and he's the writer of an awesome webcomic called The Devil Inside, which you should be reading if you're not. It is amazing at toddstashwick.com. And then Patrick Klepek from Giant Bomb, who is a horror film nut. He loves them, and uh, both of these guys have great Halloween suggestions for you. Also, Patrick just did a TED Talk about uh, the, the discourse on the internet. I highly recommend it. Check that out as well. All right, take it away, guys. Happy Halloween. This is Todd Stashwick, uh, actor, writer, horror fan. Uh, I have been asked to give my, my best bets as far as uh, Halloween recommendations. So here goes. The 2008 film The Strangers by Brian Bertino with Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman. Very scary. Uh, the uh, 2010 TV show from uh, it's a TV series, limited series on the BBC called The Fades. Darn scary about the dead uh, rising, uh, but it's it's got a little Gaiman esque quality to it. It's it's amazing, very frightening, often funny, but taken really seriously. The Fades. You can get it on iTunes. Uh, comics aside from Devil Inside which can be read at www.todgedashwick.com. I recommend a deep cut from 1986. Uh, it's a vampire story, this kind of hallucinatory vampire story called Blood, A Tale by J.M. Dematius. I think they did a reprint of it in 04. It's an amazing vampire story like you've never read called Blood, A Tale. And lastly, Whitley Stryber's Communion, his alien abduction story about his personal experiences, hands down, scariest book I've ever read. So uh, that's me signing off. Todd Stash with goodbye. Sleep with the lights on. Hey Jeff, got a couple of recommendations for your horror fans out there. The first one is The Last Door, uh, which is a episodic 2D pixel-based horror game uh, that you can play for free. Uh, you can pay a little bit more to play new episodes early. Uh, but I think the thing that's really amazing about The Last Door is that due to its sort of uh, retro aesthetic, you wouldn't think it could scare you. Uh, but it is more than just a gothic adventure game. Uh, it is actually genuinely terrifying at times and a pretty good uh, adventure game to boot. The the other one I would recommend uh, is not actually a game, but is a film, uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Um, if you have seen Cabin in the Woods, you know what it's like to really enjoy and know the horror genre and its tropes and watch some Someone play around with those for comedic effect, uh, but in uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, it's a similar concept, uh, but but played up way funnier, I think, um, in the in the sense that uh, you have a, a group of uh, teenagers that go off into the woods into a cabin and they meet some hicks, and if you've seen a horror film, you kind of know how that ends, and uh, it turns out the hicks in this film are actually just good guys getting themselves into really weird and cliched situations. Uh, so if you have seen a horror film or seen a bunch of them especially, I think you'll have a lot of fun with Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. So uh, hopefully uh, hopefully your audience enjoys uh, those recommendations. That does it for this week's newest, latest, best. Thank you to Todd Stashrick and Patrick Klepek. Also thank you to Christian Spicer. Thank you for watching, and until next week, do your best and have a safe and happy Halloween. Now, it's time for this Avenger to assemble. I see a little silhouette of a man's carapouche, carapouche, will you do the fandango? <laughs>